we believe this virus is not going away, unfortunately. Uh, it's way too late now. We think it's going to continue to evolve and we are tracking very closely variants of concern. I think Moderna is doing two key things to uh, help the world go back to an endemic setting where we can control this virus and learn how to live with it like we are doing with many other viruses. One is the company has communicated that we are very committed to keep taking into the clinic variant of concern boosters that are specific to the variants. We have already shared clinical data that are very encouraging and we're hopeful to have sometime in the summer the ability to get those uh, new variant booster authorized so they can be used to boost people so we keep people already vaccinated safe as they get potentially infected by new variants. The other piece is manufacturing. You know, we are doing an extraordinary job this year to get a billion dollars out of the door, which is remarkable for context. In 2019, we had made less than 100,000 doses. This is 10,000 times more product. So that's an incredible industrial effort by our team and our partners. But what we decided with the Moderna board is to increase the capacity to 3 billion doses for 22, because we really want to stop the pandemic in 22. And this is require a lot of high quality vaccine that are adapted to variants, and then be able to go into the endemic phase. So you mentioned getting approval by the summer. When could we see your first booster? So sometime in the summer, it's a bit too early to tell now, but our goal is really before the start of the fall, that we can start boosting people who are vaccinated last December or last January because they are the highest risk. And we are uh, worried about the variants that are spreading, uh, including the Delta variant. And so we want to be very careful and be ready for it. Do you have uh, the capabilities to boost production of those boosters, uh, enough uh, vaccines out there? So we are working to increasing the capacity to get there, yes. So. We are now seeing this conversation of intellectual property waivers at the World Trade Organization to help other countries also manufacture these vaccines. You've said in the past that doesn't really concern you. Why? So what I've said is that it doesn't impact mo <coughs> excuse me, Moderna in the short term. But I don't think it's the solution. If you think about it, there is no mRNA capacity available in the world. It does not exist. So even if a patent waiver was put in place tomorrow, for 21 and 22, the two critical years to get this pandemic under control, it will not add one more dose of mRNA vaccine into the world. The best chance the planet has today is to help Moderna, is to help Pfizer, to allow free export of product around the world, because actually adding uh, players into the field will take away raw materials that are critical so that we can deliver vaccine in 21. So I don't think it's gonna really impact it positively. The other piece we have to be careful is the negative side effects. Imagine, Sherry, if 15 years ago, there had been an IP waiver. Moderna might not have existed, or Moderna might have existed in a much smaller scale of a company, and same for BioNTech. So if you think about how those two innovative companies came to really help the planet get vaccinated, we need to be careful of the unintended consequences of what might happen 5, 10, 15 years from now if IP waivers are authorized. And the last piece is Moderna anyway, to ensure access, I'd said back in the fall that we will not uh, sue anybody who are using our IP because we wanted during the pandemic phase to maximize the number of vaccines available. This seems to be a very uh, sort of last resort effort for all of these countries to try to manufacture more vaccines, right? There are so many countries in dire need of these shots. Uh, what more can actually Moderna do? Can you help uh, the creation and manufacturing of vaccines in other countries with other companies, transfer some technology, train them? So unfortunately for 2021, most of the capacity that will be available is already called for in this industry because of a high safety and quality requirement. It takes six to nine months to add a meaningful chunk of capacity. And given we are already in our mid-June, there's no, nothing really that can be done for this year. What can be done is allowing free export of product is for countries that have too many vaccines to share those vaccines with the low-income countries so we can get as many people as we can vaccinated to work also on shelf life. As you have seen, there are reports in the media that some countries have product that's soon going to be expired. This is really unacceptable. We should have had those vaccines shared much earlier.